Hey right, guys, welcome back to Scotty's Backyard Barbecue. Barbecue is the way of life, folks. Got the choice brisket from hy V. My daughter picked that up. We're going to have this for our Easter supper. And I got some Easter sausage that we picked up at my local butcher shop. I'll introduce you to that later on in the video. Got me a new shirt, folks. Shank and Shink Barbecue, local barbecue truck here in town. I always support barbecue people. All right. I'll leave a link to his little page down there at the bottom. Anyways, we're going to do your basic backyard barbecue trim. I will not bore you with that. There's a million videos out there how to trim a brisket. Alright, videos are long on brisket. We'll get back to you in a minute when we come time to season this up, folks. Be right back. Alright, folks, we got your basic trim here. We're going to put your favorite rub on. Doesn't have just salt and pepper to be fine. I didn't miss that. Only thing I didn't like about this brisket is it got this big bump here that something sat on it when it was in the freezer. Now it's still pretty frozen. So that should that might come out after it's cooked. We're gonna be doing this fat side down. Eh. But we should put some type of binder on, huh, folk? Kind of frozen. Let's see what we got. Hey, folk, we'll do a little of this. Some Duke Mayo. I got a little bit in this jar I gotta get rid of. So. You know, I'm not a big binder guy myself. So. Let's see what an Easter brisket with Duke's Mayo. I mean, this all disappear anyway. So. We're gonna make a gravy off all this. We're gonna kind of braise it in a foil pan. So there. And it's a little frozen, that stuff don't stick too good. So. We're going to be using the Uncle Steve's thick meat. Now you can do whatever you want. Salt, pepper, garlic. And use your favorite rub, folks. This is going to be more like a roast beef than a backyard brisket. Remember, this is the Easter brisket, not a brisket that you would make on the 4th of July or something. We're not really going to focus on bark like you normally would. We ain't gonna worry too much about smoke ring like you normally would. Alright. We're gonna cook this fat side down if I haven't mentioned it. We'll be using a Weber smoke fire. Yo, Duke's Mayo Brisket from High V. How does that sound, folks? Uncle Steve. This should make a pretty good gravy right here with his Uncle Steve's got all sorts of flavor on it. We're gonna get a nice color on this. We'll get all the edges, folks. And one last final coat. <laughs> yeah. This baby's going back in the refrigerator three, four, five hours. We're going to put this thing on smoke setting for a couple hours. Kick it up to 225. Let it roll all day, folks. Then we're going to hold it in the old. I can't hold it in my oven because we're going to be using the oven for Easter stuff. So I'll find a one of my other coal smokers and we'll hold it in that, okay, folks? All right, we'll be right back when it's time to put her in. All right, guys, I want to bring this brisket out in this daylight. So it's stumbling out here in the dark. It is about 21 degrees out here, folks. I got these little grates right there I'm going to leave in. Just kind of block the heat. There we go. There it is, folks. The little high V brisket. Going in for Easter. Easter brisket. Now we're just going to leave this in here until we get the nice, beautiful color. Then we're going to put it in a foil pan to cover it. I'll bring you back when it's time for that. We'll check about four hours. Ah. Woo! 
cold out here. Oh, today we're using, uh, I don't know if it really matters or not, but we're using these hickory pit boss pallets. About all I use is pit boss pallets. They're easy to find around here in this little town. They work great. All right, be right back. All right, guys, it's been two hours in the smoke. Ooh, look at that beautiful color, folks. Yeah, I love the old smoke fire. Yeah, chewing along nicely. Got a nice little color already. We're gonna crank it up to two, probably 225. Let it roll for a while. Yeah, right. see you back here at the four hour mark. Look at that beauty, folks. What I'm looking for here, folks, since it's an Easter brisket, we're not focused too much on bark. But that does have a nice looking bark, though, folks. But I want it in the, about 150, 155. You can't see that because of the smoke here. I'll show you. Chef temp for the wind, folks. 150. 156 at the point. That's about right. We're going to take this off. We're going to put it inside this pan. Remember, this is an Easter brisket. We're not too worried about stalls or bark or smoke rings. It's going to be like a roast. Big, beefy roast. Look at that, folks. That's beauty there. Got a nice bark on her. Juicy. In this pan, I on the bottom of this brisket, I put some onions, some garlic. I'll throw some thyme in there. I got some of this beef broth. My daughter picked up for me. Supposed to be Swanson, but she got the Walmart beef broth. Oh well. We sent a kid to do a man's job. I don't want to dump it on top of the brisket too much. You guys see that bad boy? Look at that. Woo! Let's see how much that bark soaks up. Looks like a sponge, folks. I don't want to do that. All right, we'll put that in there. I'm going to wash all the spices off. That's a beauty. Beautiful brisket there, folks. No smoke fire did good. And I'm going to toss in one old Milwaukee. You can use red wine if you want, but... Hey, we're middle class here. We ain't high class. This guy these backyard barbecue. And then we're going to get us our new super white Reynolds wrap. Ooh, that'll work there, folks. Pro tip: leave enough to pull off on the end. They don't burn your fingers. All right, we're gonna put this back in the smoker all day until it reaches about 203 degrees, and then we're gonna pull it out, put it in the holding, in the Bradley holding oven. We're gonna put this at the bottom. Shut the lid. Now I got a lot of time on this brisket, folks. So I'm gonna turn this down to like 205. Let it roll. Yeah, I got all day. There's no hurry on this, folks. Cruising at 225. Looking good. All right, folks. We'll check back in about four hours. All right, guys. I'm going to bring you back. I went and got some of these new, new temperature probes. Because uh, Scotty did a boo-boo. Scotty fired up his Weber smoke fire without looking inside. And Scotty burned his old ones up. Always look inside, folks. <laughs> so I got me two new ones. Weber sent these out to me for free. Because I was honest with them. And I said I melted mine on accident. And they said, oh, that's a shame, big guy. We'll send you two more for free. Ah. So what I want to do... Yeah, and the old ones, I melted all these off. 
Since I keep coming out here opening the foil up, I'm going to stick these in there. Even though our, some of these are not very highly durable, you know, accurate, no matter what pellet grill you own, I do not trust these too much. But since these are new, they could be pretty accurate. Number one. Number two, folks. Yeah. I'm gonna give that a minute to go up. Alright folks, we'll be back in four hours. Or whenever it hits 205 and I'll show you the holding oven all right guys we're closing in on the 200 mark according to those temperature probes I don't really trust them I don't trust them on any smoker not just my Weber the only thing I trust is a moth chef's temp I want to get consistent I like to get consistent 200 around the whole thing 196 still not probing like butter 198 of course a thinner part might be 200 that feels pretty good that's 207 there folks see the lock green Two, 193 okay we got probes seem to be right on the money folks we're gonna let it roll still not probing tender yeah. bring it back when it hits about 205 I'm gonna pull it out of this pan I'm gonna put it on some foil I'm gonna wrap her tight and then I'll show you what I'm gonna do after that be right back folks all right guys, we've hit the around 202 mark. Probing pretty good. I always leave a little extra open. Turn that down a little bit. I'm gonna to try to get this thing out of this bubbling hot liquid and into the foil. I ran out of gloves. Whew. Let's see if we can get a good blooper here. I need a cameraman, folks, but I don't. I'm going to set this up right here. <laughs> We're not professional film editor here, folks. But my little channel is growing pretty good. Appreciate each and one of you. I'm just like you guys in the backyard. All right. Let me screw you back a little more. Get a long shot. There we go, folks. I'm asking for trouble, folks. I found a tool. Always oh, some tool laying around. Look at that, folks. Get a load of that. I need a film crew, folks. That beauty. Right there. 
Easter brisket. You see why we make an Easter brisket? Well, you pick up some of this Easter sausage from the Rice Lake Butcher Shop or any of your local butcher shops. You might call this a country sausage. We're gonna put that right on top. Just like that. Now this is a cold smoked sausage. It's not cooked. It's just been cold smoked, folks. We're gonna wrap this as tight as we can get it. Oh, you know what I should do? I'm gonna take a little bit of this. Not a lot, a couple tablespoons. Put that right on top. There we go. Nice and tight. Now the fat from this sausage will render out right onto this brisket. Give it extra flavor. Yeah. Just like that. We're gonna try and wrap it one more time sideways. Take it inside the house, place it inside my grandson's Bradley smoker. We're going to hold it at 150 degrees right up till dinner time tomorrow, folks. It is 6 o'clock tonight on Saturday, Easter tomorrow. So we're going to hold it. Alright, and then we're going to take this juice here. We're going to make gravy out of that, folks. Yeah. I'll show you how we do that. We're gonna take this liquid. We got this fat separator, best thing in the market. If I remember, I'll try to leave a link for this. I bought this off Amazon. It works great. That should be plenty for some gravy, folks, and other stuff. All right, we'll see you inside the house, folks. There you are, folks. I got it inside the Bradley smoker. We're going to hold it 150 overnight, folks. See you tomorrow on Easter. All right, I got those liquid off that Easter brisket folks and on the top of that is gold that is pure gold right there folks I'm going to use a little bit of that for the gravy oh I don't know let's do about a couple of tablespoons of that pure liquid gold folks that I'm going to go in there about the equal amount of, of flour. This is your basic roux. You know? Oh, that's the fat smelling good, folks. Pure gold coming off that brisket with them onions, garlic, that thyme, all them spices, the salt, pepper. Cook that raw flour taste out, folks. That's one of the easiest things to make is gravy. Happy Easter, everybody. My YouTube channel is small, so I can't afford to do an Easter brisket two weeks ahead of time. <laughs> and post it before Easter. I do holiday videos on the holiday. You can watch it next year. Alright. Different shades of roux you can get. Darker, lighter, depending on what you're making. And right, then we're going to add some of this liquid gold, folks. I'm going to kick that heat up, bring that to a boil. About two cups or so. Alright, 
Yeah, I'll bring you back when this comes up to a boil, folks. Alright, guys. It's starting to come to a boil now. These little induction top cooktops seem like they take forever to bring something up to boil when you're waiting. Oh, yeah. Hey, it won't come to its full consistency till it boils. And as it cools, it'll get thicker as it cools, folks. It's looking pretty good. It's fat. That needs nothing, folks. No salt, no pepper. Everything that come off of that brisket was perfect. There you have it, folks. Easter brisket gravy. All we gotta do now is get that brisket out of the warming box. And we'll slice that up. Alright, we'll be right back, folks. Hi guys, welcome back. There it is. It's been holding for a long time. At least 12 hours. And the old Bradley. At 155 degrees. We got our Easter sausage. That is some beautiful stuff right there, folks. It's kind of like a country sausage, like I said. Stuffed into a hog casing. Look at that beautiful brisket. Now, we're not worried about the bark or nothing. This is an Easter brisket. It ain't about barbecuing on the 4th of July or nothing. Hang on, let me get this out of here. Whoa, that's tender. Look at a jiggle, folks. Even though it's an Easter brisket, it's still got some jiggle. There it is, folks. Ew, brisket. We'll take some of that juicy from the fatty sausage. I'm gonna pour that right over the top. Yeah, goodness, folks. All this confusion, I forgot to figure out which way the grain is going. But I say it's an Easter brisket, we don't really care. Looks like it's running this way. We'll just slice it this way. Wanna go right down the middle, folks, first? Like the old money shot? Maybe that's for Easter dinner. Gotta be good and tender. Slicing like butter, folks. Ooh, look at that. Beautiful smoke ring for that smoke ring there. We all don't like to squeeze our food, but for today, we will. Uh, you ever seen a juicier brisket than that, folks? Let's slice her. Look at the juice just running out of that, folks. Camera picking that up. It was held overnight for a good 12, 14 hours, folks. Look at that, folks. Sometimes I amaze myself. Man, we're going to slice this and put it on a plate and put some gravy on it. Some of this sauce right here. We got a nice little bend test. We got a little bit of flat, a little bit of the point. Tears right apart. It ain't falling apart. It's nice and tender. Put that in there. Mmm. God damn, folks, that's good. Oops, sorry about the language. All right, folks. Well, you too can make an Easter brisket any time of the week. Look at that. Nice and juicy. I'm gonna slice it this way. Oh yeah, look at that one. That's like butter. Nice and tender. It's not falling apart. There. It's just perfect. That cooked to perfection. Yeah, just like butter, folks. There you go. Peace out.